This is the Ron Reagan Show. Call Ron at 866-303-2270. We're back with Richard Dawkins, author of The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution. Um, Richard, uh, I mentioned uh, before the break, irreducible complexity. It uh, sometimes goes, I guess, by the, the name of the, uh, the watchmaker uh, argument. You, if you're wandering along a, a beach somewhere, you uh, stumble across a watch, and by its very complexity, you can infer that a watchmaker, some entity, conscious entity, had to make that. And, of course, creationists uh, point to various complex uh, biological functions of human beings or other animals uh, and say, ah, see that? If you took one little thing away from the human eye, it wouldn't work. So it had to be created all at the same time uh, by a creator. Um, what, what's the argument to, to deal with that? Well, this is the oldest argument in the book. Um, it's the big problem that any biologist had to solve, is where does the complexity come from? And uh, this was, of course, the problem that Darwin did solve. Um, it's not good enough to say, oh, it's too complex to have evolved, therefore it must have been designed. That simply pushes the problem back into the question, how did something as complex as a designer come into being? The whole point about Darwin's idea is that he did explain how you can get complexity out of simplicity by slow, gradual degrees. Now, the irreducible complexity argument says that the parts need to be all there simultaneously or the thing won't work at all. It's like a sort of an archway or something like that, that once the arch is standing, then it's fine, it stands, but it, you, can't, you can't build the arch without, without scaffolding of some sort. Mm. And the, uh, the argument that has been put is that some things are so irreducibly complex that they could not have evolved gradually. And that I call the argument from personal incredulity. It's simply saying, I personally, I, John Smith, whatever your name is, am unable to think of a way in which it could have evolved. Therefore, it couldn't have evolved. You haven't thought hard enough. You haven't looked at the problem carefully enough. If scientists work like that, if they said, oh, I can't understand how this thing happened by my ordinary science, therefore, I've got to reject science and go for something supernatural, science would never have progressed at all. You cannot have two theories, let's call them theory A and theory B, and say theory A has a little bit of a, a, of a difficulty that we haven't yet solved. Therefore, theory B must be the right one. When theory B hasn't got any evidence going for it at all, and theory B doesn't solve the problem anyway, because it leaves open the question of where did the God himself come from? Indeed. Uh, can we see evolution taking place around us right now? Yes. Uh, mostly you don't see it because, of course, it's very slow, and the human lifetime of a few decades is too slow to see it happening. But there are a few examples, and I do have a chapter in The Greatest Show on Earth called Evolution Before Our Very Eyes, which does have some examples. Um, it's not dramatic, of course, because there isn't time for it to be dramatic. Um, the evidence from domestication is also relevant because you can actually see uh, that in historical time, breeds of dogs and, and roses and things like that have been evolved by artificial selection, by humans doing the choosing, which shows that the principle of selection works, but also natural selection. Natural selection in various parts of the world has been fast enough for us to actually see it before our very eyes. Well, viruses certainly mutate fast oh, enough and to... Oh, uh, and that's yeah. very serious. And bacteria, um, bacteria um, evolving uh, resistance to antibiotics to... Mm -hmm. That that's an example of evolution happening right at, right it in is, front of yeah. us. Then yes, yeah. uh, about oh I don't know half of Americans or so d apparently do not accept evolution. I, I mean, poll after poll is taken, and you know somewhere in the usually forty five percent or so of Americans say they they don't they won't accept evolution. They believe that everything began all at the same time. Some of them think you know six thousand years ago or so. Uh, why is this? Why does this matter? Why why should it matter to a normal you know run of the mill person going to work every day whether uh, you know whether evolution is accepted or not? Well, I think it matters for partly aesthetic reasons. I mean, it's such a, a wonderfully exciting idea. It's so wonderful to be able to understand where you came from. It's such a beautiful theory. It's so elegant that it's, um, you're really depriving yourself of something if you, if you don't know it. Um, I, I think it's worse when children are deprived as well, when the educational system uh, lets children down by, by not telling them 
this enthralling fact, and I feel very resentful on behalf of children that this that this happens. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you know, critics of course will say that it, you know it's a, it, it's a cold world devoid of meaning that has no room for the supernatural or or the or the sacred, and then that's what you're robbing people of when you when you talk up science this way. Well, of course, if it were really true that it's a cold world and that we're robbing people of all the beauty and romance, then that's, that's just too bad. <laughs> I mean, the truth is the truth, whether you like it or not, and and you can't base what you believe about what's true about the world on what you would like to be true. You can't say that because something is consoling or comforting or cheerful or cheers you up or beautiful, that therefore it's got to be true. What's true is true, whether you like it or not, I'm afraid. Yes. Of course, uh, people are talking now, one of the big discussions is whether religion itself is, a, is a, a product of evolution, something that was selected for at some point. Yes. I mean, I think that's an interesting point. Of course, it doesn't bear upon whether whether religious belief is true or yes, not. No. Um, it's certainly a, a, an interesting question for scientists to tackle mm -hmm. whether uh, religious belief does have some sort of scientific explanation. I think it probably does. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that, uh, But as I say, that doesn't mean that it's true. Yes, I brought that up just because creationism, of course, as you mentioned, largely re uh, religiously based. Richard Dawkins, it was a great pleasure talking to you. Uh, I, you know, one of one of the big thrills of my week, that's for sure. Well, that's very really kind of you, Dean. Sorry, I'm a bit sleepy. It's it's after it's well after midnight here. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just I'm thrilled that you <laughs> agreed to stay up for us. I appreciate okay. it very much. Richard Excuse Dawkins, me. author of the greatest show on earth, The Evidence for Evolution. You're listening to the Ron Reagan Show. We're coming right back.